All right, let's talk about some DC news this week. Sorry, I haven't been making a lot of videos. Everything's been slowing down a lot, but hopefully we're going to get back on track here soon. But I just wanted to talk about the Aquaman test screening real quick before I get into some other stuff. And that happened, I think, a couple weeks ago at this point. And the reaction was that the film is good, but not great. And it's more like an MCU Phase 1 film. Which is a uh, complete backhanded compliments, right? So I'm not going to take any of those on face value. If people were saying it's good, not great, that's backhanded compliment. That means they aren't being genuine about it. If they're comparing it to a Marvel film, that's also a backhanded way of saying that just because it's a DC film, it's lucky to be as good as a Marvel film. That's all some backhanded insulting shit, really. I mean, to me, just comparing it to Marvel is fucking insulting. <laughs> that, that alone is fucking insulting. But it looks like a lot of people are saying it's good, but not great. Um, I'll be the judge of that, right? <laughs> Test screening audiences suck. They're like the reason most movies get ruined, right? Because some test screening audience didn't like something, so now they have to change the movie to appease these shitty people that have no taste in movies. So, I'm just going to judge it for myself. I'm sure it's going to be way better than just good, alright? I can tell by the trailers, there's a lot of awesome shit that's going to happen in this movie. Shit that people are not ready for. Because this is not like uh, Black Panther at all, right? I mean, in that movie, you had the brother who was evil coming in to take the throne from the good brother, right? But in Aquaman, it's reversed. Like, Aquaman is the good one, but he's coming in to take the throne from a evil brother that already has the throne. So, just that simple reverse is gonna make for, like, a wildly different experience. And I still haven't seen Black Panther, and I'm not going to, but I could already see when, uh, Aquaman comes out, the Black Panther comparisons are gonna be there. Uh, from people who just are dumb and they didn't watch the Aquaman movie, right? And that's going to happen. Like, the whole first month that Aquaman's out, or we're just going to get MCU comparisons, and people are going to keep saying it's not as good as the MCU movie. I guarantee that's what people are going to start talking about. But then again, most of these same people think Batman vs. Superman is a bad film, so I'm not going to take anyone's opinion on DC films seriously until I see it. But anyway... On to the next thing I want to talk about, and that's Jay Oliva talking about how Ben Affleck did write a Batman script, and it was really good, and they were about to film this shit. So, you know, when I first read that tweet from Jay Oliva, my mind was blown. Um, and even Joe Magnanello, uh, if, if that's how you say his name, <laughs> uh, Deathstroke, he even liked Jay Oliva's tweet, right? And if you remember that Ben Affleck uh, scene that he put on his Twitter account with Deathstroke coming out of the Bat Carrier Trooper thing that was in Justice League. If you remember, Ben Affleck made a little scene and he posted it on Twitter of just Deathstroke coming out of it. And a lot of people thought he just did it for, like, fun, you know? He just did it to show what Deathstroke's costume looks like. But now that we know that there was a Batman script that was already done... That Ben Affleck finished, we could assume that that Deathstroke footage was actually test footage for the next Batman film. And that's what I think it really was. I think it was just test footage. They were testing out lighting and shit because that's what they were about to film. They were about to film Deathstroke fighting Batman in some Batman film, right? But we'll never get to see that, right? Because of, you know, YouTube critics <laughs> and fucking bloggers. That's why we're not going to see... A Batman film directed by Ben Affleck. It's probably another reason why we're not going to get the Snyder Cut. Because these same people, you know, they won't support the Snyder Cut. But they'll support James Gunn being rehired, you know. But they won't support the Snyder Cut. And that's why we're not going to get it. Because a lot of these people have millions of followers. And they really could get this Snyder Cut released if they just told their followers to start supporting it, right? And there you go. You have millions of people ready to support the Snyder Cut, all these people, these Collider people and YouTube critics, all they have to do is just say, release the Snyder Cut, and we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people supporting the Snyder Cut movement, but no, they want to support a pedophile, uh, you know, that's, that's great and all, but can't you do two things at once, you know, you could support James Gunn, but you can't support Zack Snyder, that's funny, but anyway, that's more of a tangent, <laughs> I need to get 
back on track here. Some Shazam photos came out. Uh, one that really caught my eye was Dr. Sivana. Uh, he looks powerful. He looks like he's channeling the Shazam wizard's powers. Uh, I think this is Black Adam giving him these powers to fight Shazam and stuff like that. And, and you know they're going to talk about Black Adam at some point in this movie. And it's definitely going to be some teases to Black Adam. Because Dr. Savannah just doesn't have these powers just because. You know, it's for a reason. So I can't wait to see how they work Black Adam into this movie. How they do the teases. How they talk about him and stuff like that. That's the thing I'm going to be looking forward to the most with Shazam. And while we're talking about pictures, the magazine cover for Entertainment Weekly came out of uh, Captain Marvel. The uh, Brie Larson Captain Marvel. And there are people that are honestly saying that this is going to be better than Wonder Woman. And that is just laughable. It's laughable. You know, her costume looks horrible. It looks like shit. It looks like just another Ant-Man costume. It really does. It looks just like Ant-Man's costume. There's like no difference. It's like this leathery shit. Looks like the costume designer spent like three hours on it. You know, it doesn't look that special. And frankly, I don't know why Captain Marvel is popular at all. It is a fact that Marvel took the name from DC, right out from under DC, in like the 60s. DC was suing a smaller company for using Captain Marvel, the Shazam Captain Marvel, because that version of Shazam was too close to Superman. So they were suing the company that originally came up with Captain Marvel. And while they were doing that, Marvel Comics comes out and they claim the copyright to the Captain Marvel name. And now, every year, if they don't make Captain Marvel comics, the name will revert back to DC. So the only reason they make this female Captain Marvel, the only reason they make these comics is because if they don't, they'll lose the name. And I don't know about you, but I've never heard of a good Captain Marvel book. No one's ever, like, said, you have to read this Captain Marvel book. Because her books are not that good. Shazam, on the other hand... When he was called Captain Marvel, he had some awesome books. And even though they changed his name, he still had awesome books. They weren't making Shazam books because they were going to lose the rights to him. You know, they are making him because they wanted to make good stories. Captain Marvel for Marvel Comics is not the same thing. Alright, they only make this character because they will lose the rights to the character. They It's like Sony with the Spider-Man movies. If Sony stops making Spider-Man related movies, they lose the rights to Spider-Man. That's the same exact thing for Captain Marvel. They're not doing it because of women empowerment. They're doing it because they have to. All right, There's a big difference there. But anyway, that's my little rant on that. <laughs> Don't want to get too into that. But you know, Marvel Comics did some shady shit to get that name. And nobody should forget that, you know. But anyway, what else we got to talk about? Oh yeah, Ben Affleck's in rehab again. <laughs> um, now this was more recently... But he had to check himself back into rehab. And apparently he's back with his ex-wife, Jennifer Garner. Apparently they're back together. I don't know what happened there. But but apparently Ben Affleck drinks too much. So he has to go to rehab because he drinks too much. But, you know, he's got plenty of good reasons to start drinking. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, you just got to look at shit from his perspective. You know, everything he does gets scrutinized beyond belief. When uh, he does interviews, all people want to ask about is Batman, even though he makes other films. Uh, that's got to be super frustrating. Uh, and the films he does make as Batman, like Batman vs. Superman, they get shit on completely, even though he spent like a year of his life making it and totally believes it's a good film and then everybody shits on it. Yeah, that shit could be disheartening to the point where you want to drink, you know? And of course, going through a divorce, less access to your kids. There's a lots of good reasons for why Ben Affleck wants to drink. <laughs> I totally get it. But hopefully, he can work past this so he can continue to be Batman. This is the only thing I'm concerned about when it comes to this rehab stuff. Is will it affect his role as Batman? And I hope it doesn't. I hope we get at least one more film with him as Batman. I really enjoy his Batman. And honestly, I don't think he needs rehab. I just think he needs to drink less, you know? Just have a couple beers, don't have ten beers, you know? If he could just learn how to control it, everything's gonna be fine, right? <laughs> and in recent news, Ben Affleck has actually been spotted outside of rehab, uh, working out and stuff like that. So it looks like he's coming out of it. He's gonna be working out, getting in shape again for future movie roles. Hopefully it includes Batman. 
Uh, but on to some other stuff. Uh, Robin Wright, who was in Wonder Woman, she played the Amazonian, had died. I forget her name, General something. She died in Wonder Woman, but now she's been cast and she's in Wonder Woman 1984. She's going to be in the Wonder Woman sequel. And I assume it's going to be a flashback scene, much like Chris Pine. I think Chris Pine's character, who is in Wonder Woman 1984, I think his character and Robin Wright's character, they're just going to be like ghosts. You know, they're going to be visions that Diana's seen. Uh, her past is haunting her and stuff like that. I think that's what it's going to be. Um, there might be a villain in Wonder Woman that's causing this to happen to Diana. But, you know, that's where I think this is going. I think they're just reminding her of her past. And, uh, yeah, that's about it for now. That's all the news. Um, I'm going to put a link to a, a video I saw earlier this week. It's about why Thanos is wrong. <laughs> Not only is his plan evil, but it's also a dumb plan. And that's what this whole video is about. I loved it when I first saw it, and I'm going to put it in the link in the description. Uh, go click it, check it out. I thought it was great. It perfectly encapsulated why I don't like Thanos at all, and why he's really not that good of a villain, and he's actually a pretty dumb villain. And also, if you haven't checked out the Comic Movie Marks commentary on Batman vs. Superman, they have both parts up. It was uh, awesome to watch the movie with them. If you haven't, go ahead and watch it with them. I love that they did it live. I hope they keep doing it live because it's fun to see their actual live reactions and uh, interact with them while they're watching the movie. I think that's awesome. So yeah, go check out that stuff. Comment below. Let me know what news intrigues you the most. And that's it for now. I'll see y'all on the next one.